theyeshiva.net. Okay, we're 84. First column, Mamash, in the middle of the page, the line starts, Enoi. Enoi. Mamash, in the middle of this page. Enoi Ella. You see, Enoi Ella Ziv is Pashtasada. Probably like 20 lines from the bottom, 25 lines from the bottom. You see, the next line, Avul Pchinnah Seiv of Kalam. Avul Pchinnah Seiv of Kalam, the next line after that, the line starts. The next line starts, Almin, Almin Lachiyosim, Avul Pchinnah Seiv of Kalam. There's two types of love. There's the Ava that comes from what's called Memalek Almin, and there's the love that comes from what we call Seiv of Kalam. The first Ave discussed, Moshe says, Moshe Rabbeinu says, La'aves Hashem alakecha ki hu chayecha. The love, because he's your life. That's the classic summation of Mamalek Alman. A person loves their own energy. <laughs> right? It's a good thing to love your energy. I don't only mean your energy, you know, the, your energy, as we say, you know, I like, I like your energy. You love your energy, you love your life, you love your chios, you love your soul. I don't know if it sounds good to say you love your electricity. <laughs> electricity is usually not the lovable item. We appreciate electricity. But a person loves life. I love life. I love my life. I uh, cherish it. You love your energy. You love your, your chiyus. Kihu chayecha. What is that chiyus? What is this life? The truth of it is elikus. That's godliness. Like he says, the lashon is who is baruch who atzmoi hachiyus shabekerba. He said earlier. Those are the, the the key words. That is the chiyus. It's not two separate things. As he puts it, v'chay of mamish. This this is mamish's life. It's not a separate. It's not a separate thing, because Hashem is chaye ha'ilamim al yonim v'tachdeinim. He is the life, the consciousness, the reality, the core, the the energy of all of the worlds, the highest and the lowest, and of course it includes the person's individual. Life force, there's the collective life force, there's the individual life force, every person has their own unique, you know, that unique DNA, so to speak, that is unique to you, which is suitable to your body, and suitable to your mind, and suitable to your soul, and and suitable to your mission. So he's chaye ha'olamim, on a general, but also very detailed, very individual. That's called mamale. Mamale means he fills mamale. Mamale. Do, do we have a choice, to, or it's automatic? It's it's automatic, but this could be so many cover-ups. You know, depression, uh, apathy, indifference, laziness, uh, cynicism. But it's not an exercise of free will to love, uh, to love you. Love. Right. Not, uh, right. I think naturally we love our life, but... Huh? But he says it's an avoid of amal gadol. So, so... But, but it's available. It's available. Or maybe not. I don't know. It's available. It's a big work because of the many cover-ups that can be. So it's still a willpower. Yeah, I think more awareness, like, you know, per- perceptiveness. Uh, Thoughtfulness, mindfulness, his boininess, contemplation. Because sometimes there could be a lot of things that, you know, disturb that. That's A and B, also to be able to make the association from my life to the divine, because that's also concealed. I like my electricity. But as we know, you can be a biologist and uh, deny that... uh, you know, if you want, if you people do it all the time, the ability to be able to also appreciate the fact that the chius, the life force, that is divine, that is godly. It's not a separate thing. That also requires his burden us. So 
That's what the word mamale kalalman means. Mamale means he fills the worlds. What does filling mean? The word fill, I told you many times, in Gashmias and physicality, you say, my cup is filled with coffee. Yeah, or my closet is filled with shmatas. <laughs> or my drawer is filled with paper. Yeah. So it's two separate things. You have the item that fills another item. The water fills the cup. So the cup is filled with the water till the top. It's full. It's not empty. It's not half empty. It's full. But it's ultimately two separate things. When you say in spirituality, something fills something else, you're not dealing with physical properties, two separate items. It means that they're really one thing. If this is filled with this, it means this is the toichen. Toich, the word toich, toichen, comes from the word toich, which means the inside. You say, this is the toichen of this, this is the very, it, it fills this, means this is the, the primius of it. This is the truth of it. This is the core of it. This is the inside of it. This is the reality of it. You may look, you may look at something from the outside, but when you look at that which fills it, it means you're looking, what is, what is its true essence? So when you say mamalik halalman, it doesn't just mean, you know, God is the hand and we're the glove and the hand goes into the glove or, 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 uh, or we're the coat and it puts on the coat. You know, so I'm now... Or I'm the cup and he fills that. Yeah, I mean, that's what we say, Mamalik Alam, and he fills the worlds. But it really, it really means something much deeper. It means that that is the world. In, in, in Gashmis, it's two separate things. There's the draw and that which is in the draw. And you could take it out from the draw. The night is, my draw doesn't have to have paper or shmatas. It can have something else, yeah? <laughs> I can put in pens or keep it empty. Yeah. The treadmill doesn't have to have hangers on it. I mean, that's the minhag, but you can also put yourself on it if, if you're a little disciplined. So, 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 <laughs> you can also keep hangers there, don't mind, but uh, especially if there's no closet space. But Muncie doesn't have that problem, Baruch Hashem. So in other words, you say the cup is filled with water, but it could be filled with coffee, it could be filled with 7-Up, it could be filled with wine, it could be empty, so there's ultimately two separate things, and one fills the other. Of course, there's a relationship. I can't pour coffee on the table. It's not going to do me well, or in the tissue box, or on the book. The cup is made to hold the coffee, but ultimately we understand it's two separate entities, and if they can be separated. When you say mamala kalalman, you have to just look at it, as always, these metaphors, you have to look at it in a more abstract and authentic way. He fills the worlds. So He fills the worlds. When you're talking about ruchni, something fills something else, Huh? He is. Yeah. It is. It is that. Yeah. That is its primis. That is its toichi. That's what he says. Who atz my hachayas shebekirboy? This is the chiyas. It's not two separate things. This is the world. In other words, if you look at the world superficially, it's all material. I just have a body, and the body happens to be alive. But if you have a little hisboyinus. A little awareness, a little meditation, especially a lot of awareness and a lot of meditation, you'll come to the conclusion and to the realization that it's all elikus, the whole chiyus in your body, just like in the whole body, our body is a microcosm of the cosmos. Right? It says, Oilam katan zeha adam. Pasik says in Kahelas, Gamas oilam nasan belibam. Human is a microcosm of the macro of the whole world. We are a universe in miniature. <laughs> Everybody is a little cosmos. So our body is called a guf katan. It's a small body. And the world is called a guf gadol. But you know, it really operates on the same level. If you ever uh, studied a little chemistry or science and you saw how an atom works and you looked at it, right? Now look at the solar system. <laughs> the solar system... It's unbelievable. It's the same picture. Just huge. <laughs> huge. You know, millions and hundreds of millions of miles or more. But it's the same picture. But, but here, it's tiny. Without a microscope, you can't even begin to see it. Even with a microscope, what can you see already? But it's, it's a big goof of a small goof. So Mamala Kalalman really means that the core of it all is... The Dvar Hashem, the Ruach Piv, what we call the, the God's word, God's energy, which fills. What do we mean fills? 
it gives substance, it creates, it sustains, it vitalizes, it vivifies, it gives content, design, purpose, and life to every single being, existence, every single creature, beginning with the human being himself or herself. So Moshe says, La'avas Hashem alakecha, ki hu chayecha. Hu chayecha doesn't just mean he, he can give you life, you should love him because he can give you good things in your life. No. Ki hu chayecha means that it, he is your life. You're, you have the deepest relationship with Hashem that can be. Because it's not two separate things. We are the electricity. We're not separate. We are the electricity. We are an aspect of it. No. This is Amamalakala. He says, this is still finite. It's spatial. It's, it's powerful. It's big. It's intense. But he's still, it's still finite. It's still spatial. It's Bechal Nafshecha. Then there's Bechal Moedecha. Bechal Moedecha is called a love from Saiv of Kalalman. What's the love from Saiv of Kalalman? So he explained, the Balatanya explained, that the Pasuk says, Bidvar Hashem Shamayim Nasu. Uve Ruach Piv Koltzvam. The heaven was made with Dvar Hashem, the word of Hashem. And everything else, all of its legions, cults of arm, was made beruach piv. What's ruach piv? Literally, the spirit that comes from his mouth, or the breath that comes from his mouth. What's the meaning of that metaphor? He says, by a person, a word, or ruach piv, the, the spirit that comes from my mouth, the, I mean, the breath that comes from my mouth, which is sometimes called the hevel. It comes from inside of you. It comes from inside of you. That's where your breath comes from. Words, they come through the vocal cords. They emerge outward. They emerge outside of me. But they come from my toichius, as he puts it. From my pnimius, from my inside. But, everybody understands that you can't say that the breath or the word constitutes the very core the very essence. It's what you call a ziv. It's like a ray of the sun, a ray of light. The ray of light comes from the sun. A light wave comes from the solar core. But to say that the light wave uh, encapsulates and captures the entire solar core, the entire sun, then we wouldn't be able to relate to it. It would be too intense would be too big, it would be too hot. <laughs> it would be too bright. No spaceship is getting close to the sun, at least in the next few days. So Mim Male represents the Hevel, the breath, the Dibur. That's, so to speak, the ray of light. That's Mamale. Yeah? If I put my cup under Niagara Falls, it's not going to be such a good idea. I need a restricted flow, a trickle, a trickle, right? In order to fill the cup and in order to fill every cup because the cup is seven ounces or eight ounces. It has to have a limited and then it can relate to it. The chios of every being is a limited one based on its chemistry, its design. I don't have the DNA of an angel. I, have to, I am me. You are you. The salamandra is the salamandra. The frog is the frog, and the caterpillar or the moss, the butterfly, is the butterfly. They have their chios, they have their pers personality, so to speak. But it's based on their chemistry. So even though it's, it's extraordinary, what is revealed, and the truth is that in truth everything is one, but what is revealed, what I can contain in my consciousness is that which I can contain in my consciousness. <laughs> which is my finite experience of life. That itself is endless. There's one layer and a deeper layer and a deeper layer. You know, every day you can grow and open yourself up more to yourself. You know, how much percent of our brain do we use? And that itself, it's, 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 Mamala Kalaman ain't no small thing. <laughs> we still haven't figured out the secrets of a cell. So, you know, the Balatanya jumps as I smoothly from Amali and Seva. Really, Mamala Kalami, you know, you could sit for a life on it. 
You don't have to jump ahead of yourself. And it's not pshat after all the research. It's like, there used to be a feeling in science. There was a famous, uh, in the early 1900s, in 1903, there was a very famous scientist who wrote, who wrote a telegram, I think, or an article. And he said, everything that we had to discover was already discovered. <laughs> There's not going to be any. <laughs> uh, the head of the patent office, right? Yeah. I think 1903, 1904. He said, there's not, no, you know, there'll be a couple of details, but the real things. Are, and, and, and you can't blame him. Understand the changes that happened from 100 years earlier after the Industrial Revolution. Electricity, machinery, <laughs> automobiles, cars. In my also, oh, a car. <laughs> the Wright brothers figured out the plane. <laughs> Aviation, flying. I heard a story from the whole time. He did not say that. He was 90 years old, but he got his head in the shed. He said, you're going to see people on the move. You're going to see people. Yeah, okay. Take numbers. Yeah. Take numbers in the ganze world. Yeah. Today, so you would think today, 100 years later, 2019 people, today nobody will say such a thing. Because <laughs> they saw what happened. Everybody knows 50 years is going to be a new world from now. And it's not like we know what the shock is going to be. Nobody even knows how shocked we're going to be. They know at least the Derech Eretz to know Mevesnisht. That's a big thing. That's itself is a tnu of Alakos. It's already a, 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 a sense of Ein Soif. Infinity, you can't wrap your brain around. You just have to sit and marvel and like, okay, what else do you got up your sleeve? <laughs> What's the next? That is too much for something. Uh, so I'm saying even the Malakalaman is pretty infinite. That's my point. He says it's Gvul and Makrim and this. Don't. It's all relative, yeah? <laughs> And exactly, but I'm saying, but Malakal Alman is nishta a cup of coffee. And even a cup of coffee is nishkin cup of coffee. You know what's in a caffeine, in a, in a coffee seed? <laughs> Every nakud of gvul is so, it's divine, so it's infinite. But Malakal Alman means the way the divine energy is restricted into a form and into a formula. Actually, that works into a form and into a formula that sustains this particular object or item or being or organism or brain, etc. So there's that love that is directed on that. It's very individual. It's very personal. It's me. It's my identity. But what's the relationship between the ray and the core, the solar core? The light wave comes from the solar core. The ray of the sun that comes into our home comes from the sun. But nobody's going to say that the ray captures the sun came in. It's just a very, very limited and finite expression that we appreciate, that we cherish, that is still incredible. It lightens up our, brightens up our earth. What would we do without the sun? Isn't that the great debate earlier about Simpson and the ray in that itself, there's many ways of looking at it, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Right. So you're saying there was a debate among Kabbalists if the Tzimtzum in the oil is Kipshutai. Yeah, yeah. If the Yadaita Maimer. If the Tzimtzum in the oil, which we call Mamale, and we speak about the Tzimtzum, the restrictiveness of it, the restriction of it, the filtering, if it's a literal one, if it's not a literal one, but certainly from a place of perception, that's what allows finiteness to exist. It's a wave and a particle, right? Life is the only thing that is a wave and a particle. Yeah. Paradoxical. Light is a wave and a particle, but when I try to observe it, <laughs> it collapses into one state, Right? In other words, my observation of it, my experience of it, imposes itself on its reality. So yeah. Because I don't think in paradoxes. <laughs> my to the tool that I'm using to figure out reality will define the reality. 
And if I'm not aware of this, I think this is all the reality. Because <laughs> that's my tool. So that becomes reality. That's another fascinating item. Was? Usually the only thing that you say usually and when yeah <laughs> I'm a land look at the tailor <laughs> and why you think you're uh, the retina plays games and the cycle doesn't play games there's always play games worse games <laughs> the eye at least is not distorted the cycle come in the eye yeah yeah <laughs> No, what we see is basically the marriage, right? Of the, say, the light, the, the light waves that come out from the reality, the way it's perceived by our retina, by a part of our eye, and interpreted by the brain. And if the retina doesn't have the keli, the tools to be able to perceive it, or the brain doesn't have the ability to interpret it, it doesn't stand back and say, oh, wow, there's so much that I don't know. It, it doesn't recognize it or changes it into the reality that it wants. You know, blind spots work that way. It's very interesting. There's a part of the eye, right? A part of everything that the eye doesn't cap, catch. But the brain looks at the environment and says, I think <laughs> that this blind spot, you got to fill in with this based on my calculations. Huh? <laughs> Yeah. So mentions If the tree falls in the forest and I'm not there, what's the sound that it makes? What is a sound? The sound is the vibrations of the tree falling, the way they're experienced, right? by my ear and audio processing and interpreted by the brain. So it's always a, a marriage of two realities. Now, as long as we all agree, who cares if it's fiction or real? You could sell it. <laughs> You'll tell me that the colors in the painting are not real, right? But if everybody agrees that that's what it looks like, so fine, so sell it. Yeah. But what's Ruach Piv called Svam? Ruach Piv means it's a Ruach Piv. So Ruach Piv comes from the Pneumius. Of course it comes from the Pneumius. But yet, as he puts it, you can't define it as Atzmusoy Umuhusoy. And you'll say that the Atzmus, the core, has changed from before the breath came out, from after the breath came out. The breath is inside of me. It's part of me. It's included in me. It's submerged in me. But you can't say, that is me. What, why is this so important? He says, you have to understand this, that the Torah describes creation as Ruach Piv, as his Dibur, as Ruach Piv. In other words, so let's see now inside. You see the line, the whole life that we spoke about, which is divine, of all the worlds, highest and lowest, not only the, even the highest. What is it? It's a ziv. It's light. It's a ray of light. It's spashtus ha'ara. Ha'ara is like a ray, a reflection, a glimmer. His spashtus means it extends, it expands. Which comes from the oir of Ein Saif Baruch Hu, that itself comes from light. <laughs> but that light is ain't soif. It's the light that's infinite. And then there's a ha'ara from the oir. So you have a ray of the ray, right? A reflection of the reflection. Toich kol almin. And this was what infuses all the worlds. Again, toich. Toich means it's the, this is what infuses the worlds with chiyos, with life. And remember, life here doesn't only mean the electricity of the refrigerator. It means the refrigerator itself too. That is also is electricity. <laughs> the physical matter too is chiyos. Huh? That's the part again. It means the form of the carbon. 
the form and the content. The content is also form <laughs> in, in its core. I, I quote often Max Planck, a famous th- uh, quantum physicist. He was a Nobel Prize winner. So he once said, uh, it's just a very powerful line, uh, consciousness is not a derivative of matter. Matter is a derivative of consciousness. So toichel al melachi yosam. That's mamale. Avol pchinis soiviv kolal men whom Hashem yochel is slapish toichel melachi yosam. What is soiviv? Why is it called soiviv? Around? Why can't it be in? The answer is it can't enclose itself within the worlds to give them chiyus. Shu pchinis atzmusa yomuhusay mamish. This is the etzem. Etzem really means the bone, but the reason it's called the bone is because it's the core, right? Etzem is like the bone. You say the bone of something. The core of it, not the covers. Shubchin is atzmusay. It's the core. Umuhusay. Muhusay comes from the word ma. Mahu. What is it? Like, give me what it is. Mahu. Not the expression, not a ray, not the form. The essence of it. The, the quintessence of it is called the muhus of something. Atzmusay, muhusay, ma, which means his core, his essence. That's what we call Saiv of Kalalman. El Saiv of Kalalman. What does Saiv of mean? Saiv doesn't mean it's around it and make hakafas. It means Maila Umata Shavim Mamish. Here the highest universe and the lowest are going to be identical. Why? Sha'inam Taifsim Makam Klaal Negdoi Khasvashalam. Because they don't occupy any space, any separate space in the presence of Saiv of Kalalman. The Pasuk says, we say in Pesukah de Zimra, Hoidoy al Eretz v'shamayim. His Hoidoy, Hoidoy is the glory. Hoidoy, in Pesukah de Zimra, Yahalu Hashem Hashem Kenizko v'shamayim l'vadeh. Hoidoy al Eretz v'shamayim. And he says, first earth, then heaven. Even though it's the other way around. So he teaches, Shabchines Eretz, Nidbal Abchines Shamayim. Because in this Nikuda, Eretz is just like Shamayim. <laughs> For the kula kame chuli, the expression in, in from Pasuk Daniel, the kula kame, like he always says, kula kame kaloi chashev. Everything in his presence doesn't occupy any separate space. In other words, what do we mean, kula kame kaloi chashev? Imagine the light wave in the solar core. <laughs> the light wave, when it expands, when it leaves, when it's emitted, the ray of the sun is very, very significant lights up the planet. What is the the chashivos, the significance of the of one light wave in inside the solar core? It's there. It's like the breath when it's inside of me. The word when it's inside of me. It's there. The potential is there. It's coming from somewhere. But it's completely subsumed. It's completely subsumed in the essence. Is there a there? Huh? Is there a there? Yeah, I'm. I. I. Although you conceptualize right having a, having an existence in the solar core, right? It's really not. It's a contradiction. It's, but it's in order to understand it, you have to back it up in the way you can get at it. No. Perhaps. In other words, an infinity can't. You can't say that there's a, there's a ray in infinity. It's just infinity. And from that perspective, there's nothing. <coughs> that's, I think you refer to it as that's what we call it. Yeah. Right? You can't say that Lagabi Mamalikalalman, the world doesn't occupy space. Of course it does. The whole Mamalikalalman is the electricity that 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 gives chiyus to the world. You could say that the Metsius of the world is Alakus. Saiv of Kalalman the Khidish is that ain't of Samakam Klal Nagdai Khasvashal. <coughs> and Eretz and Shemayim over there are mamish the same because even the highest worlds mitzad their consciousness are not a keli for the pure infinite core Mamala Kalalman is all about distinctiveness, individuality diversity <coughs> in Saiv of Eretz is also Shemayim that's called the light it doesn't fill it, it encompasses it but when we say encompasses it doesn't mean it's just not in it, it's not it we're calling it Saif of Kalalman because it's not the light that is trickles down and is limited to become absorbed within the parameters of the universe. 
This is atzmusi muhusi that the world can't contain because if it would contain it, it wouldn't be a world. It would just all dissolve in absolute infinity. In atzmus. Of course it's one. It's ultimately... It's really one, yeah. Mamali and Seva are not two separate things. Hashem Echad. <laughs> it's Mamali is the Pshat, the way we experience the divine. And every creature experiences it differently. But Tzad Hashem, of course, it's one. Yeah, yeah. Mamali is also Bittl, but it's a different. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, all the world is bittel. <laughs> There's no universe without bittel. Shaila is what bittel? There's the bittel mitzad mamal and the bittel mitzad seivav. Mamal kalalman, you find yourself in God. Seivav <laughs> kalalman, you lose yourself in God. I was once learning with a, a briske boch, a, a big lamdan, a young man. He, was, um, he learned in brisk for like forever. So uh, <laughs> he says, <laughs> he says, Mamala Kalalman is a din in the mensch. And Saiva Kalalman is a din in the Mabrishtan. <laughs> in Yeshivisha terminology, right? Mamala Kalalman is a description of the world. And Saiva Kalalman, so to speak, is a description from Hashem's perspective. <laughs> Losing and finding. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Losing yourself and finding something. And I'm saying maybe it's one way just to, to you know, give it some ISIS. Finding myself in something means it's my ultimate. What do you mean I find myself in it? I find my voice. I self actualize. The first Ava is La Ava Sashem Alekecha Ki Huchayecha. God equals self-actualization. Living out your life, living your soul, feeling the pulse of your energy, that is a lakus. It's the ultimate finding yourself. It's the ultimate self-discovery. <laughs> in a relationship, take in a relationship, just to give some marshal. I have a relationship with you it's a beautiful relationship. What is at the core of the relationship? My own self-realization, my own self-actualization. You allow me to become the best person I can be. That's a tremendous relationship. A spouse, a friend, a mentor. You bring out the best in me. You can call it selfish, but I'm not, it's not selfish. It's, it's self-oriented, but it's not selfish in a negative sense. Isn't that what you want for each of your children? To be able to find a partner in life who will bring out their beauty, their smile, their grace, their, their talents, their resources, their love. Somebody who brings out the best in you. In other words, my relationship with you helps me become who I am, who I could be. That's an incredible relationship. <laughs> Don't take it for granted. I'm using that as a marshal. You want to be in touch with your ultimate skills, your ultimate resources, your ultimate life. That is what a relationship with Hashem means. Relationship with Hashem means the ultimate relationship with your ultimate self. Your most awesome self, as the slang goes today. Your most awesome self. You could sell yourself for cheap. You can just relate to yourself in a primitive way. But if you want to exercise all of your muscles, physical and spiritual, and all else, so he says, Ki this is the core, go to the core. And in a relationship that's very important, that I, I could feel that really talking to you, being with you, being in your presence, having a relationship, brings out the best. You know, some have a relationship with somebody, they bring out the worst in you. <laughs> They trigger the worst things. Sometimes you have to work that through to get to the to get to to, the, to a deeper level. So if you have that relationship where someone brings out the worst of you and you work on that.
Yeah. Change too, is it a of course, it's tremendous. Sometimes in a marriage, the, the two bring out the worst in each other because they trigger each other in crazy ways. But that means that if they work it through, they'll be able to heal and then trigger each other in very powerful ways. But that takes a lot of work. That takes a lot of work because superficially you become my enemy. Because you're triggering me. Suddenly, Alam Zechov Gevek. Shalom Bayez, Tchiyas Hameisa. Mamale, Soivim, Atzmus. You don't know what I'm talking about. Triggers, trauma, relationships. Therapy session, guys. Time for therapy. 7.42 a.m. The therapist's office opened. <laughs> but despite my jokes, it's true. Right? Superficially, you, you, you drive me crazy. But you know what? If you could tell that to the person, it's guns good and they could stay. You say, what drives you crazy about me? Oh, good, wonderful. Psychoanalysis. $10,000 $10, later, you're a new man. What drives you crazy? Why do I drive you crazy? Let's hear and of course, you will figure out what's driving you crazy. And then if we can do that together and remain present and not run away and just say, that's it, I'm done with you, a lot of good things could come out. Now, we all know that's not always possible. We all know that. It doesn't always happen that way for so many different reasons. And our mission, our life's journey takes us to different places and nobody exactly knows how and why. And... Uh, you know, in camp we would go tubing. So they always said there's level one and level two and level three and level four. You know, level one is you just sit in the tube and you cruise through the water. And two hours later, you're on the other side, you take pictures. Level two, you'll hit a rock, a waterfall. Level four, ooh, strong rapids, currents. So there's different, life, different levels of life, you know. Some people just tube through life cruising. I don't know, too many today, but you have those Yechidah Gula perhaps. But sometimes it brings us into, you know, this, this strong currents and strong waterfalls and the tube flips over and you got to make sure that your head doesn't hit a rock. That's the main thing. Your legs are going to hit some rocks, get some scratches, but you have to make sure your head is in the right place. So there's different types of journeys, but when we can work out that superficial resistance, which may not be so superficial, we can come to a deeper awareness, then it's precisely you who could bring out the best in me, just like one, once you brought out the worst in me. You know, sometimes you have it with a father and a son. Your son is very uncomfortable with you, and you become uncomfortable with him because there's so much baggage there. But the reason he's uncomfortable with you is because you're his father. If you would have been a stranger, he would be very comfortable with you, not because he's closer to that person, because he's further than that person. It's very easy to be very comfortable with strangers. You don't bring out anything in me. It's the people who are closest to us who become furthest from us. You heard that line? And that's the pain of life, and it's the beauty of life, if I can, if I can stay in the relationship. The depth of hate is sometimes just a reflection of the depth of love. There's nobody you have issues with like your mother. <laughs> Because who are you closer with than with your mother? Tell me. <laughs> in, whose, in whose womb did you hang out for nine months? Grosser <laughs> knacker. Whose food did you eat for years? Whose? Your own? <laughs> you know, we have to recognize that. But I have to work it through. I have to work it through. Can't that work be done even if that other person is in Yenagal? Yeah, of course. Each person has a garden, so to say, they can go into it and reflect upon whatever it is. Yeah, sometimes it's harder, but yeah. Hope is never lost. Hope is never lost. So I'm saying that as an actual practical thing, that I may have a trigger. Of course, yeah. Someone who is... Of course, of course, of course. So therefore, I can deal with it. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is all a marshal for Hashem. Like the Balatani said, the first relationship takes an avoid. Sometimes there's deep triggers. I have to work them through. I have to work them through. But this is the path of a relationship. It's a relationship as a path to the ultimate self-realization. 
You know how all these gurus advertise these weekends. Come for a weekend, and the new you, you'll discover the new you. You, you ever see those stuff? You ever try them out? The new you. Who's the new you? That's right, we want, a, we want the new you. We want the real you, the ultimate you. Hareini es marayich, hashmiini es koilich, hikoilich arei v'marich nava. That's all mamalakal alman. Now this ain't bad. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. That's the relationship as a path for self-realization. But that's all the way you're defined by me. <laughs> right? The relationship, back to that brisker yeshivish expression, it's a din in me. <laughs> it's a gather in me. But that's what I'm looking for. I want to live my ultimate life. So it's how the you impacts me, how the you is defined by me, how the you benefits me. And I'm not talking here as narcissism or some person who can't see the other person in a relationship and it's just about me because then it's not going to be about you, it's going to be about your narcissistic self. Right? There's the old anecdote of the girl, of the woman who says she's stopping to date because at the last date, this fellow spoke three hours about himself. Just me, 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 me. You know, you have some people. All, I did this and I did this and by the way uh, and then after three hours he turned to her and he said you know enough of me talking about myself she got excited wow thank God a little humility and he's you know let's hear what do you have to say about me so we're not talking about that because that's not bringing out your awesome self it's bringing out a very impoverished and scared self narcissism is usually a symptom of the greatest fear in the world there's no place that's safe outside of myself. So therefore, I have to remain within my narcissism all my life. We're talking here about of a relationship that, of course, there is, there is deep respect for the other person. And part of that respect is there's what we would call bittel. There's bittel. That's why we said, I'm Mali, there's bittel. But part of that respect, what is it, it accomplishes the self-actualization of me, that relationship, and that give and take. And that openness and that vulnerability. But then there's a whole deeper element in a relationship. And the deeper element in a relationship, you usually can't get to without step one. Because if you get to step two without step one, it's going to be um, something missing. What's the deeper element of a relationship? And this is, you know, <laughs> truth be told, if relationships would have the first step, they would be pretty powerful. So here already going to step two, I feel a little uh, awkward because like step one, you know, where are you running? But, but step two is something much deeper. That's the metaphor for Saiv of Kalalman. I don't find myself in you. <laughs> I lose myself in you. That's what I, said, I meant. In other words, it's not about me, it's about you. The relationship is not about me. Me finding my ultimate potential, which is beautiful. But that's all still the way I'm limiting your energy to me. The Nakuda of Saiv of Kalalman is that it's not a love of me, it's a love of truth. It's the love of truth that completely transcends me. And I can't find myself there. Because in the ultimate truth, I won't find myself. Because the light wave will not find itself in the solar core. If it looks for itself in the solar core, it's missing the point. Here, what's the truth? Who are you in your truth? You're in the solar core. The breath, when it comes outside of the mouth, it becomes a ganza It occupies its own space. It's like the light wave. It's like the ray that comes into the room. It's very significant. But when you're in the solar core, what's your truth? What's the truth of the light wave? It's not going to start taking pictures of itself. It's bottle but metzias. Bottle doesn't mean it's not there. If the ray of light is outside of the sun, it's also in the sun. It's actually there in a more powerful way. It's not that you're not there. You're there. 
but the you is completely aligned and one with the ultimate source that is beyond the you. It's a different type of love. That's a love that's beyond Mitzias. It's also the ultimate self. <laughs> because the ultimate self is when the self is in its core. But that you're reaching not through finding it, but through losing it. Is that type of subversal? Not giving it, it, it level. Not giving it any. Hmm? level is it manifest in the person only at extreme circumstances. Like, you see that's Yeah, Mesiris Nefesh, that quality of Mesiris Nefesh is often an expression of this. Real Mesiris Nefesh. In this level, is that something that relates to every day or only very special, unusual you're saying, is it relatable every day? I mean, that depends always, you know, who the person is, what the, what the matzav is. And this love, as he says, never changes. It never gets interrupted. Because it's not about consciousness. <laughs> the first love is about the consciousness of kihu chayecha. It's all about consciousness. When my consciousness is, is operating on a low frequency, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm... It's going to affect the love. The loyalty that comes from the oneness that transcends the self, by definition, nothing can interrupt it. Yeah, because it's... it's, it's right, because it, it, it transcends it. It transcends the self, sense of consciousness. And that's, that's why it has that quality of infinity. It's not, it's not defined by consciousness. It could be conscious, but it's not defined by it. It's not initiated by consciousness. It's not precipitated by consciousness. It flows through it. It's not defined by it. So therefore it's not limited by it. So therefore it can't it can't be altered by it or cease. Now you understand? Because I said the word precipitated. It just flows through. It flows through it, that's the word. It flows through it. Consciousness becomes a conduit for it. But my line is, what's in the cup? <laughs> what is the cup? I can't do. The cup, the cup. You think I'm talking about this cup? I'm talking about this cup. <laughs> So the cup cannot be uh, a trauma. Well, trauma doesn't allow me to be aligned with my source of life. What is trauma? Trauma is that which takes me away from my own life. I'm traumatized. I'm living in the trauma. I'm responding to life from a place of trauma, not from a place of life, from a place of danger, from a place of suspicion. I met a person who's suffered a lot of trauma on Tuesday. So I asked them, you know, about their life. The person said, you know, before, I'm always hiding. It's an expression, I'm always hiding. I could never, before I come out, I, I peek out of the closet, you know? It's constant. Can I say it? Can I not say it? Who's here? Who's not here? Better not say anything. I mean, there's so many different types of trauma, but I'm just giving you an example. So it's like the person is in, is in a terrible bubble, and it has to be punctured. It has to, has to be a rapture. Defensive. Yeah, it could be very defensive, very scared, very insecure, right? Very unnatural. This person with this can have a free will. He's trapped like that. I'm sorry, what? Person trapped like that. Like one Does he have free will? I don't think so. When a person is in a state of trauma, their freedom is so compromised. There is a place that is always beyond trauma. Right? There's the chelik alaykami mal that is always beyond trauma. Nobody can traumatize it because it's divine and people don't have access to it. 
And if I can tune into that, so there's a part of me that can overcome the trauma. In other words, there's always a voice of sanity. There's a voice of fearlessness. There's a voice of confidence, even in a traumatized victim. But I have to be able to uh, be vulnerable and allow myself to open up to that place. Because if not, I'm stuck in the trauma. I have to trust that that exists in me. Because the trauma tells me that without it, I'm going to die. Because the trauma is also protecting me. It's, it's, my, it's, my, it's my bulletproof vest. If I come out of it, I'll be shot. I'll be stabbed. You don't come out of a bulletproof vest, vest when you're in, in Kabul, Afghanistan. Or, or in the battlefields of Syria. This kid grew up in Syria. Civil war. Maybe Borough Park on the surface, but internally was civil war, wherever it was. Right? So how could you come out of your hiding place? You lock the door and you stay behind locked doors. But if the person could know that there's a place that is deeper than the trauma and they can trust it, so then they can come out and allow themselves to take over rather than the trauma take over. But it's a scary process. Much more, much more unconscious than conscious. And for this, actually, Soiv of Kalalman is very helpful because Soiv of Kalalman is not defined by consciousness, so it can't be destroyed by consciousness. You understand? My conscious appreciation of life is beautiful, it's powerful, but it's also limited and it can be played with, it can be altered. Because consciousness can be manipulated in so many different ways. And then my consciousness of life can be compromised and sometimes can be traumatized. But the part of self that is rooted in Saiv of Kalalman is never filtered, filtered through any filters. So it always remains in its full infinite beauty and intensity. Nothing can ever obliterate it. Nothing. And everything in the divine is reflected in the person. There's the mamale of the person and there's the soiv of the, of the person. The mamale of the person is the self that is filtered through the vessels that the self can experience. The soiv of the person is the core that is unchangeable and it encompasses all of the person, the highest and the lowest. And it retains its pure infinity always. It never limits itself, so it's never subject to any form of manipulation. How do you tap into that? Adam doesn't have a thought process It's also a case. How it feels. Yeah, so by an animal, it's just programmed. In other words, an animal, as far as we know today, we may be surprised, but as far as we know today, the animal, you know, we're the only ones who asked questions, these types of questions. The animal is also a reflection of Hashem's life. Everything, the blade of grass too, every shrub, every bush, every tree, every plant, every insect, every reptile. But they don't have the consciousness. I'm talking in a revealed way. The consciousness to become aware of the big picture and the role that they play in the universe and the choices to make. They're pre-programmed by a divine energy, and they just march to the beat. They march to the beat, with, with, and that's it. That's what they do. The human being is the, is the person, is the organism that asks questions that no animal will ask, including questions of identity. Who am I? Where am I from? What's my destiny? What's my mission? What's my purpose? How do I tap into myself? Sheep, don't stop and you know, wake up in the morning. Who am I? Who am I not? How do I tap into my sheep today? They also don't go to classes. Just because maybe they meditate and they love and they are very Yeah, you ever see how they eat? They eat, they chew for hours, they fabreng. That's where they get all their information. So is there an awareness without the mind? Without the intellect? Well, they have, an, they, have, they have an instinctive awareness of... of, of what to do, how to do, self-preservation, self-gratification. They have that instinctive awareness. You know, it's a mechanism that exists within them. It's the brain signals and the electricity 
that allows them to function and survive, which we also have. But the human brain, from a Jewish perspective, has that soul, and the soul is an existential creature that asks questions, that deliberates, that wonders, that is inquisitive, it's curious. It wants to understand what and why. And it also confuses us. We have so many choices. Most animals know exactly who they are and what they're supposed to do every morning. They, you know, bees don't have an identity crisis. Why am I a bee? Why am I not a cat? To piddle or not to piddle, that is the question. They know who they are. It's obvious, it's clear. It's part of the march of creation. It's part of the beat. And they all dance to the beat. And then we say, who says there's a beat? <laughs> We're the only ones who say that. And I don't like dancing anywhere. <laughs> you decided it's a beat. It's your problem, not my problem. Right? That's the human soul. The human soul is always choosing. And the, true, the real reason is because the human being is the one who's supposed to bring it all together. We're the one who, we are the ones who will consciously, consciously dance to the beat and complete the symphony. The only one who can have an impact on reality because we choose. They are symptoms of reality. We have the ability to choose. So something could be created. They're pre-programmed, so they're just living out a program. So nothing new happens. It's the program. Ah, uh, they have moods, of course. No, uh, listen, part of the system is they have moods. It's part of their system. They get tired. <laughs> they can be depressed, of course. Yeah, yeah, listen, you know how elephants mourn for their dead? And, and there's loyalty, of course. Kelev is kulelev. There's a lot of emotion. But that itself is pre-programmed which we also have, we're also pre-programmed. <laughs> we also get into bad moods, at least some of us. But the human being also has that uh, a higher consciousness, let's call it, a higher consciousness of reason, of, uh, of deliberation, of transcendence, of spirituality that puts him and her in a different league. And therefore, we can also be lower than an animal, as the Gemara says, and higher than an animal, right? The Gemara says, Yitush Kadmach. Sometimes you have to look at a mosquito and say, this mosquito is doing much better than I. You know, he's living out his purpose. <laughs> he knows exactly what he needs. Now he needs your blood for lunch. <laughs> he comes to your hand, gives you a kiss, eats lunch, and says, bye-bye. And it's getting out and get kratz, yeah. If get kratz, yeah, do kratz. So you look at the mosquito, and the mosquito knows exactly what it's doing. The bee flies to the nectar, to the plants, to the flowers, absorbs the nectar, goes back to the beehive, feeds the queen, creates honeycombs, allows the new bees to hatch, dies 30 days later. Does the beast sit down and say, Am I, you think I'm living a fulfilled life? <laughs> and who is this queen anyway to control me? And why am I a bee? And who cre And I don't like making honey. I'm not as sweet as, uh, <laughs> as the honey. And, ooh, and why am I a servant and not a master? <laughs> right? You know, the, the bee is the bee. It fulfills its purpose naturally, instinctively pre-programmed that has the code, and it lives out that code. By the way, there's a lot of studies of trauma that were done on rats. You know that? They separated rats from their mothers and their family environment, and they were traumatized. And then they see how the rats live in trauma. So there's trauma in animals, there's trauma in rats. A lot of research of, of trauma was done with rats. I've read some of it. Huh? Yeah, of course, there's, there's, there's despair and frustration and angst. You take away a calf from its mother, right? Then there are tears, and of course, there's a lot of emotion. 
Well, that's, that's not really instinct. Huh? That's not instinct. So something you learn more than that. It is in. A, huh? Otherwise, it's got to be more than instinct. No, it, it, but it teaches us, it teaches the biological process of the brain. How do we respond? How do I respond when my survival is, is questioned? When that security that the little, the little baby monkey, the little baby chimpanzee, right, experiences in the bosom of its mother, and then it's, it's torn away, or the rat is torn away. What does my brain do? What does my brain do, right? I cry, I want to go back. And that teaches us a lot about children, a lot about adults. That's where the similarities are very, very powerful. We learn a lot about human nature, but this is human nature. How do we respond? How does the same brain that is brilliant in survival and all of the instincts that it needs, and it knows how to eat, and it knows how to digest, and it knows how to go to sleep, and it knows what it needs, right? And how does it respond when those essential needs are taken away? And what does it do to me practically? What does it do to me internally? They also did a lot of studies when the traumatized rat comes back to the family, how the trauma gets undone. It's just a very interesting thing, Stam. I read once an essay in the New York Times about it. And the researchers discovered that when the family reaccepts the rat in full pleasantness and joy, the effects of the trauma were almost minimal. A few days later, it was back to normal. And the researchers showed, based on it, I don't know that if it's conclusive, but it's a very powerful idea, that more than the effects of the trauma is the way the closest people deal with it. When I come back, do you look at me as this crazy weirdo who's like Nebuch case and, uh, and you know, walking on eggshells around me and we can't talk about this, we can't talk about that? Or you could really embrace me with everything in a very natural way, and that allows me to embrace myself. When you don't embrace me, because I'm, I'm the weird one. Unbelievable what they did. They did research again and again, and they saw different types of how they welcomed them back. Sometimes the rats were very, uh, like, you know, you don't belong here anymore. And then they never made peace. They could never make peace with themselves. So this is incredible stuff where we could see so many similarities, and that's why scientists do it. So we thought it's a hanger rat, a down rat. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have so many different types of dispositions. You know, the people who have dogs will always tell you this type of dog, that type of dog, horse trainers, horses. You know, types. Every animal has its own chios, its own its own mishagasen. <laughs> Within every species, every every creature has its own chiyas. And, and even plants and trees, they don't speak and they don't show emotion, but they all have an inbuilt mechanism. How do they deal with danger? What does a tree do when there's no water? It doesn't sit down and die. Those roots go searching. <laughs> Some trees Yeah, yeah. What is winter? The tree knows that a difficult season is coming and I'm not going to expend energy. <laughs> There's a lot of energy keeping my leaves on and keeping them green. It's not easy. <laughs> what, does the, what does the tree do? This is amazing. The tree basically gets rid of anything that it's not essential for survival. Because I don't have the energy I need. I, I don't got the sunlight I need. I don't got the sugar I need. Because the sunlight becomes glucose, it becomes sugar. So the tree says, okay, that's it. We're going to live with essentials. Boom, bye-bye leaves, I'll see you later. It's basically, it's a tremendous survival skill. And it allows the tree to live without expending energy that it doesn't have. It's not Bechira. It's, it's, the, it's the built-in, but it's incredible. How does a tree know to do this? Who, which classes did it go to? Botanists sit for 10 years and write PhDs to figure out one tenua of a tree. How did the tree know this without the PhD? <laughs> and it wouldn't survive, yeah. So they say, well, the trees learned this after billions of years. What'd they learn after billions of years? What'd they learn after billions of years? They looked at the other trees. The other trees died, so they learned. <laughs> 
We have a game in, 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 in chemistry classes. We call it the laws of nature. Somehow when you use the word laws of nature, you don't have to explain anything else. But that's the greatest farce. What do you mean the laws of nature? What are laws of nature? <laughs> what are the laws of nature? What do you mean laws of nature? Who taught nature to have these laws? <laughs> Why does nature abide by these laws? Why can't my teenager have laws of nature? <laughs> I was talking to somebody, uh, so I have a question. You have a teenage daughter, yeah. Her room is messy or clean? Greatest mess in the world, yeah. Do you ever come back to the house and expect to come into the room and just see it organized? He says, absolutely not. She has to organize it. I say, well, why can you imagine that one day you'll come back into the house and just after all these years of this room being here, yeah, it's an old house, just somehow the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the blanket comes on the bed instead of going off the bed. Like, like why when I get out of bed and I throw the blanket, maybe just one day it'll just end up exactly the way it was before I went to bed. And when I throw off my socks, they'll just go into the hamper. <laughs> we tell it to our teenagers every day. <laughs> but somehow it doesn't happen without effort. And you know how long it takes to clean up? Six and a half minutes. But somehow a world that is complex beyond, 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 beyond. <laughs> just boom, boom, the trees figured it out. They just figured it out. But it's not Bechira. That's the point. There's the divine genetic code. It literally follows a code. Like my computer. My computer is brilliant, by the way. You know that? My calculator is also brilliant. So my computer is programmed. And the writers of that code program the computer, and the computer lives up to that program, unless there's a virus, trauma. <laughs> Which is also a code. <laughs> Which is also a code. <laughs> <laughs> computer can learn from certain... Uh, yes, yeah. The computer can't learn anything. Until, until you put that learning capability. Right. You have to program the computer with a program to learn from its mistakes too. <laughs> from its virus too, right? Artificial intelligence, it's unbelievable. It's soon going to run the world. I don't know, probably 80% of the workforce. Uh, I don't know danger. Everybody will come learn. What, why danger? Mitzvah Shabbos, you want pizza? You're not going to call up a guy in Pomona to deliver pizza. Well, if it's, if it's You're going to pizza. Then it could be manipulated. Of course. Way, of course. Pizza. Yeah. Yeah, uncle. Pizza. And remember, robots don't need vacation. You know what I mean? They don't get grouchy. They don't negotiate about salaries. There's no egos. Who needs people to run the world? Meshagas. Uh, as long as uh, we have a correct social structure, then it could, be, it could work very well. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, as long as all the people that participate in that society get certain type of dividends yeah. from them, from enjoying it, why not? So it's the limit. Yeah. So animals, in that sense, animals have tremendous consciousness, tremendous abilities, profound trauma and despair. But it's no pchira, it's pre-programmed. It's the code. And the code allows for viruses, yeah. It allows for all types of viruses. Just like our code allows for viruses. And our bodies also are programmed to respond to those viruses with antibodies. And the viruses are programmed to mutate and reattack the body and get rid of those antibodies and shock them. And then our bodies are programmed to fight back. And that we could learn a lot from the animal kingdom. And that's why the study of animals is so valuable in terms of this type of research. Change it, Oh. What it fails to capture is that dimension that is unique to the human, to the human being. Now they don't like a lot of them. Don't like that. They like to call us Homo sapiens. Because remember, if essentially we are chimpanzees who just went through a cognitive revolution and uh, an agricultural revolution, and uh, we learned how to use spears <laughs> and and swords, and then plant wheat. Right? And then somehow stand on two feet, whatever. 
there is a great benefit to that. The benefit to that is there's no responsibility. And whatever your nature dictates is right. There's no such a thing as right or wrong. There's no... They have responsibility, even according to them, they have responsibility. You have to, to survive, to preserve your family. You can't use the word responsibility. You could use the word... Uh, and you could use the word instinctively, what people, a lot of people want to do. How do you explain the patient? Physical pain. Yeah. In other words, what Max Planck was saying is that the reason the table exists is because I believe it exists. <laughs> Even physical. The color of your. Trust me. Nobody's going to be observing this table. It's 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 right. What? Nobody's going to observe this table. It's going to if you don't observe the table, it disintegrates. It collapses into its... Uh... Yes, it's over. It's just out of the air. Nothing exists. So because somebody's observed. And if you don't see the table, then... There's an expression I once read. A, f a physicist once wrote a big one, a secular physicist. He said, when you leave your house, it doesn't exist. I'm still trying to tell it to the telephone company, but they don't uh, buy it. They don't buy it. The electronic, elect well, because that's I. I still see your house, but when you don't live in that house, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. Apart. yeah, that's something else. <laughs> that's something else. Everything is a relationship of two things. It's the reality, and it's my observation of the reality. And my observation defines what it is. You have to understand that. Yes, the observation part. So that's true with everything in the world. What what is it without my observation of it? Nothing. You put this table under a microscope. You look at it under a microscope. Look at an ant under a microscope. Anything in the world. A different reality will be revealed. <laughs> No, you can't even touch it. You can't touch an atom. Just like the eyes affect the reality, the hand also. Okay, mid sight. sight. <laughs> the brain, and the brain, and the brain, they work together, yeah. Yeah, pleasure to have you. Were you actually here today, or I just saw you? See, were you here or was just my observation? You were here? Okay. <laughs> so I'm asking. Dynasties. 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 Right? So what do you have to know? So just don't know. So the ultimate knowledge. The ultimate knowledge is that I don't know. But that's the ultimate knowledge. Because then we will remain in the state of uh, fitness. So if that's so then just don't know anything. A baby also doesn't know. Or maybe a baby does know. <laughs> but there's not knowing and there's not knowing. There is ignorant ignorance and there is enlightened ignorance. It's a different ignorance. You know what you don't know, you know why you don't know. <laughs> so you already know much more. Even though you don't know. <laughs> Yeah. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at triple w dot the yeshiva dot net 
slash donate.